hair. So we're going to have a little bit of a talk on anatomy and in particular the anatomy of the neck and the bony structures of the neck, so the cervical vertebrae. So it can be interesting to have a little bit of anatomical knowledge and especially mechanical knowledge when you're doing some kind of dynamic yoga practices such as Ashtanga yoga or maybe a very dynamic vinyasa yoga can help cue you for alignment. Okay, so here we go. So this is a part of a skull. You know, it's plastic, it's not real. So this part is part of the skull. And then here you have the first three vertebrae. Okay, so the first three bones that are in the neck. And the first one, so they named them cervical, and they named them one, two, three, and then they're four, five, six, seven. So there's seven cervical vertebrae. So what's really interesting though is the way the first cervical is articulating with the skull. Because on the skull, you have kind of the, it's like two bowls going together. So if you had um, two cereal bowls and you're planting them in on top of one another, and then you could kind of roll one in the other. So it's a little bit like this. So I'll come closer so maybe you can see better. So see, this is the back of the skull. And then I'm going to open this so that you can see here, it's a little bit rounded inwards. And then here, it's rounded outwards. Okay, so that when they come together, then they do this movement. So what would that look like? This is okay, so sometimes it can be called the yes joint because it does not do no. Okay, it won't move that way, or it's not supposed to move that way. Okay, so then we look at so this is um, C1, so cervical one, and I'll show you. Close, and you can see that there's this big hole in the so inside, and so these are the places that it's articulating with the skull, these two places. And then you have C2, which looks like this. Let's put them so you can see them side by side. different here. Maybe you see it. There's this thing sticking up in C2. Okay, so it's called the dens. And this, this vertebrae is missing a body because if I look at some of the other vertebrae, this is C3, there's a body of the vertebrae right here. Okay, so and all the other vertebrae, they have this body. So if you look here, you see these are the bodies of all the vertebrae. But C1 has no body. But C2 has this kind of extra prominence, which is like the body that should be going into C1. So they articulate like this. So if you look at that, you can probably already guess what is one of the main movements that's going to happen there. I'm going to show you on this. So, right, because the dens can be turning inside C1. So sometimes this can be referred to as the no joint. So something that's interesting for us for our yoga practices is that about 50% of our rotation of our neck comes in that articulation, the articulation between C1 and C2. Okay, and then another thing, if 
you can see here, um, I'll try to make it a little closer. There's these places here which are representing the spinal discs. Okay, it's made of plastic here. And if you notice, there's no spinal disc between C1 and C2, and obviously not between the skull and C1. So there's a little bit less of this um, shock absorbing effect happening there. Okay, so what do those kinds of things mean? So one thing that it can mean is that if I'm going to do something like drop my head back, there could be a lot of pressure right here, the skull to C1. Okay. If I'm going to do a spinal twist, I might be using a lot, like perhaps I'm not, I'm not very flexible and so I can't turn very much in the spine and maybe not so much in most of the neck, but then suddenly this one spot that moves very easily, I'm able to do a spinal twist looking way over there, but everything else is facing over here. Okay, so it can give us some ideas while we're doing our yoga practice if I'm really moving with the whole spinal twist and even twisting in, in space because if I'm doing something like that, you can see how my hip lifts, lifts up a little bit. So there's some rotation in space as well. So my spine is rotating, but also I'm using the spatial movement to move my pelvis. Okay, that's a whole other topic. So coming back to the cervical vertebrae. So I hope that makes sense that between skull and C1, this is sometimes referred to as the yes joint because it takes only that movement, okay? Then C1 to C2 has sometimes can be called the no joint because of the dent, that prominence that comes up into C, C1, okay? So because of that. And it also can have the, the movement up and down, like forward and down extension and um, flexion. Okay, and then we go on to the other vertebrae and they become a little more similar. So they have the, you know, the body and then they have the spinous processes sticking out, but we won't go into all that. Another thing I wanted to talk about is if you see on this model here, you see this red plastic line, right? It comes through here. You can see that red plastic tube. So this is to represent the uh, vertebral artery. So it's one of the main blood supplies that goes up into the brain and you have it on both sides, obviously. So when we look at the, the actions of our cervical vertebrae, if, um, if I do something such as extension of the spine, so I'm letting my head come back, and then I do a rotation at the same time, can you see what's happening to those vertebral arteries? So I've done extension of the spine and then I'm going to rotate. So it puts some pressure on those areas and um, over time this isn't really what we want to be doing in our yoga practice. The neck would prefer to do more or less one movement at a time. So if I'm going to extend extend the neck, which means go backwards, I want it to only be extending backwards. I don't want to add the rotation into that. If I'm flexing my neck, my neck prefers to do that movement only. And lateral bending, it prefers to go to only one side. If it's rotating, it prefers to only stay in rotation and not add like a back bend or a forward bend movement to it. 
So years ago when I was in a car accident and I got fused vertebrae in my neck and whiplash and I had a lot of um, damage in my neck. And this is one of the things the physical therapists had told me is never to do these neck rolls. So they really showed me I had a machine, you put your head in this machine to strengthen the neck and you push your forehead into that you know, pad in the front, you push your forehead, your back of the head to the back and then side to side and then to straight, um, stretch it out. It was doing one movement at a time, you know, here to the shoulder, arching down, maybe a little bit of a turn to this to turn and look this way to stretch out one side, but never hanging the head back and then rotating. So I was fortunate to learn this um, before I really started Ashtanga. I'd been doing yoga, but not Ashtanga. And so I kept that kind of in mind, but um, often we don't know those kinds of things. So I would be aware of certain things like hanging the head back, Okay, you want to keep a tiny little bit of a bunda in the front so you're not just letting the, you know, the bowling ball weight of the head hang on the top of the kind of relatively small cervical vertebrae. And you don't want to have the head hanging back and doing rotation at the same time. So think, where could that happen? These, these movements could happen in quite an advanced pose called Setu Bandhasana, it's the last pose of primary series. This could happen in back bending, in any back bending where you're really striving to bring the head back, even upward dog, which is a sim this is why usually um, I say the gaze is to the nose, so that it keeps a little bit of this movement. And first, when you're doing upward dog, you're moving with the chest first and then letting the head come back a little bit. But very often what I'll see is people are collapsed in the chest and then they're getting all the movement just in the neck. And if you are getting some aches and pains in the neck after practice, this could be one of the reasons for that. So I don't know, that was a very quick anatomy study. I hope it helps and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to, to ask me. I can expand further. I'm not an, you know, an expert, but I have been looking at this stuff for a little while and also I can feel it in my body. So this is what is very interesting as a uh, yoga practitioner and learning a little bit of anatomy, they start to make sense because you feel what is happening. Okay, so continue your experimentation and enjoy. Namaste.